On May 9th, 1945, the Japanese heavy cruiser Haguro deployed into the Malacca Strait from Singapore. It was to be the ship's last voyage. A few days later, Haguro was ambushed by a flotilla of Allied destroyers who used dozens of torpedoes and heavy gunfire to sink her over the course of an hour-long battle where Haguro's crew made their final stand. By the start of May 1945, things were not looking good for Imperial Japan. In the Pacific, the Allied net around Japan was tightening with intense fighting on Okinawa, while in the Indian Ocean, Rangoon was captured as the Burma campaign unwound into a decisive victory for the United Nations. With Japan on the back foot almost everywhere, its occupied territories throughout Southeast Asia looked more and more precarious. As a result, Field Marshal Hisaichi Tarauchi, the commander-in-chief of the Southern Army area, began to pull back from some of the more isolated garrisons from February 1945, as part of a staged program of evacuations to concentrate Japanese strength in Malaya and Indochina. By May, Tarauchi was ready to begin Operation Show, the evacuation of Japanese troops occupying the Andaman and Nicobar Islands to the north of Sumatra. To accompany the transports that would be needed to sail for this task, the 10th Area Fleet had only the heavy cruiser Haguro and destroyer Kamikaze available. It was a thoroughly inadequate escort, especially when considering what Haguro was up against. By May 1945, the Royal Navy's East Indies fleet had come a long way from the dark days of 1942, when it had been forced into headlong retreat in the face of Japan's fearsome carrier force. Even after a large part of the fleet had been split off to form the new British Pacific Fleet, the remainder under Admiral Sir Arthur Power was still formidable. In May 1945, there were two battleships, four escort carriers, three cruisers and eight destroyers available. In the first week of that month, Admiral Power's fleet had been at sea, supporting the Allied advance on Rangoon. It returned to Trincomalee in modern-day Sri Lanka on May 9th. But just hours later, the fleet was ordered to raise steam and prepare to go to sea again at first light. Allied intelligence had decrypted Japanese signals ordering the cruiser Haguro to put to sea and head for Port Blair in the Andaman Islands for what was the start of Operation Show. By now, Admiral Power was away from his fleet on a trip to newly recaptured Rangoon, so it fell to his deputy, Vice Admiral Harold Walker, to take the fleet to sea on the morning of May 10th and steam eastwards hoping to catch and ambush Haguro as it left the Andamans sometime on May 12th. This video is sponsored by Ridge. Ridge wallets are a great alternative to the traditional way of carrying your cash. They are slim, durable, available in a whole range of colours and come with technology to block digital pickpocketers. Ridge is obsessed with making durable, space-saving gear you'll actually use. Stock up with a minimalist wallet, key case, ring or watch for a more organised everyday. They're marking their 10-year anniversary in 2023 and you can celebrate with the best offer by going to Ridge dot com slash balaka and save up to 40 percent until march 26th that's ridge.com slash malacca haguro and her escort the destroyer kamikaze left singapore on may 9th and headed north up the malacca strait the cruiser was skippered by captain kaiju sugira and had his superior rear admiral hashimoto on board but when japanese air reconnaissance spotted a british fleet on its way east haguro was ordered back south trying to avoid an unwinnable confrontation and hope that the Allied fleet would eventually go away. Frustrated by the failure of Haguro to steam obligingly into the trap laid for her, Vice Admiral Walker took his fleet to the southwest for refueling from the tanker Echodale on May 13th. While he did so, the Japanese transport Kurashoyo Maru slipped through the net, steaming from Penang to Nankauri in the Andamans by May 14th. Encouraged by the lack of Allied response to this sortie, Haguro decided to have another go at the voyage, starting its way north again on May 14th. By early the following day, Vice Admiral Walker had committed some of his ships well to the east in a hunt for the Kurashoyo Maru, which was now on its way back to Malaya having picked up troops at Port Blair. The five destroyers of the 26th Flotilla under Captain Manly Power were rattling along at 27 knots while Avengers launched from HMS Emperor streaked overhead 
on the hunt for Japanese shipping. At around 10am, three aircraft spotted and attacked the Ikiro Shoyo Maru with bombs but without success, losing two Avengers in the process. At almost the same time, Captain Power aboard HMS Salmares received a signal from the fleet shore based headquarters at Colombo, ordering his flotilla back to the southwest. As with no sign of Haguro, it was believed there was no prospect of catching it. But Captain Power, guessing that whoever had sent the order would not have known about the ship that had just been attacked by the Avengers, decided to ignore this order for the time being. He held his ships on the same northeasterly course while signalling back to ask for a confirmation to the orders in light of the reports from the aircraft. Whilst waiting, at 11.50 Power picked up another report from a second wave of carrier aircraft, identifying one Japanese cruiser and one destroyer south of the Kurashoyo Maru's position. The destroyer soon received permission to sink enemy ships before returning to the fleet and set off in pursuit. The hunt for Haguro was on. Haguro, meanwhile, had been warned by the Japanese outpost on the northern tip of Sumatra of the approach of Allied naval and air forces and was not about to hang around to find out exactly what kind. The cruiser and her escort swung back round to the south and steamed for Singapore. The Allied forces set off in pursuit, with Captain Powers destroyers 130 miles from the enemy by 12.10pm. They steadily closed the distance while Haguro was occupied with fending off air attacks by more Avengers through the afternoon. But as afternoon turned to evening, the destroyers turned southwards, following Haguro into the Malacca Strait and rearranging themselves into a single line abreast, keeping a keen eye out for their powerful opponent. At more than 15,000 tons fully loaded, Haguro displaced more than all five of Captain Power's destroyers combined, and with 10 8-inch and 8 5-inch guns, packed a much bigger punch. She was also a distinguished and experienced ship, having fought in battles including the Java Sea, the Battle of Midway and at Leyte Gulf. In a gun battle at any sort of range in daylight, Power's destroyer flotilla would barely stand a chance of getting close, let alone sinking Haguro. But the Japanese cruiser's Achilles heel was its speed. Once able to do 33 knots, years of war service without proper refit had left her boilers and turbines ailed and only able to produce around 25 knots, slower than the British destroyers could do. And so the range between the two groups of ships slowly came down until at 10.40pm the radar on board HMS Venus detected a large contact to the northwest. Venus's bridge crew were initially sceptical of the contact, believing it to possibly be a cloud, but when the suspected cloud was seen to sharply alter course to the south at 11.32, it was clear that it was the Japanese warship they were after. Captain Power took his ships further south to cut Haguro off and then at 12.15am turned north, spreading his ships into an attack formation with HMS Venus and Verulam as the most advanced ships on each side. A few miles away, steaming south, oblivious to the trap awaiting them, was the cruiser Haguro, with the escorting kamikaze trailing behind. The Japanese ships were pushing to reach the safety of Singapore, but had been slowed by the relative inexperience in these waters of her navigator, Commander Ota, who required a slower speed to be certain of avoiding minefields. As a result, Rear Admiral Hashimoto and Captain Sugira had calculated that any pursuing force would catch up around 1am if they maintained the pursuit into the small hours. Despite knowing this, according to Lieutenant Commander Isamu Motora, the officer of the watch unaccountably failed to raise the alarm when Lookout spotted a line of destroyers approaching 9 miles away. It was not until 12.50 that the captain realised what was happening and took control of the ship by which time the British destroyers were just 6,000 yards ahead and closing rapidly. Segura ordered a hard starboard turn and opened fire on the nearest destroyer on the port side, which was Verulam. The cruiser swung round but straight into the teeth of Venus on the opposite flank. The destroyer closed to 4,000 yards, lined itself up and then promptly flunked its torpedo attack by having the incorrect angle set, which would have meant a certain miss. Unable to launch, Venus hauled away sharply to the west, trying to keep Haguro encircled. Seeing this, Segura assumed the enemy ship had launched torpedoes and began another hard turn to starboard, 
coming back round eventually to a southerly course and now steaming straight for the oncoming Salmares and Vigilant at the centre of the British formation. Kamikaze, meanwhile, in its attempts to keep up with Haguro's erratic manoeuvring, had ended up ahead of its companion, closing on Salmares at a combined speed of almost 60 knots. Captain Power took evasive action and Salmares raked the destroyer with anti-aircraft fire as it passed down its port side. The British ship tried to turn and engage the destroyer, but Kamikaze slipped away into the darkness. Meanwhile, the situation around Toguro was now totally chaotic, with the cruiser being assailed on almost all sides by hostile ships. At around 2.10, Salmares and Verulam made near simultaneous attack runs on the north and southeast. Haguro concentrated its fire on Salmares and blazed away with 8 and 5 inch shells, knocking out one of the destroyer's boiler rooms just as it was launching torpedoes. Meanwhile, at 1.14, Captain Douglas Bromley of Verulam fired a full salvo of 8 torpedoes, having been able to approach without receiving any fire before setting off to the northeast to try and cut off Haguro's escape. The oncoming torpedoes from Verulam were spotted on Haguro and an emergency turn to starboard was ordered, but it was too late, and the turn only carried it into the spread fired by Salmares. Three hits were observed, probably from a combination of Salmares and Verulam's torpedoes. A large fire began at Haguro's stern, its speed dropped, and the cruiser began to list rapidly. As Captain Segura's ship foundered, it came under fire from all directions as the British flotilla came in to finish her off. Rear Admiral Hashimoto ordered Kamikaze to save itself with a retreat to Penang shortly before a British shell demolished Haguro's bridge, killing almost everyone there. At 1.24, HMS Venus began her second attempt at attacking Haguro, with a salvo of six torpedoes launched from the north. Three minutes later, on the opposite side of the stricken cruiser, Virago followed suit, launching seven torpedoes. With torpedoes flying all over the place, the British were extremely lucky not to hit each other. Twice during the battle, Venus's crew reported hearing the sound of torpedoes passing right by the ship. Haguro was not so lucky. Three more hits were scored on the cruiser, which by now was stationary, listing over dramatically, but still afloat, and still with her guns blazing away, even with most of the senior officers on board dead or wounded. 31 torpedoes had now been fired and still Haguro refused to go down, so the British ships came in again. At 1.50, HMS Vigilant fired eight more torpedoes, followed by a final attack from Venus with her last two. At least two more hits were observed and Haguro finally began to sink. At 2.06, Venus signalled Captain Power that the enemy cruiser had been sunk and the British flotilla began to retire to the north, having sustained only minor damage and the loss of two men aboard Salmares. The day after the battle, Kamikaze returned to the site of Haguro sinking, where it found hundreds of sailors clinging to wreckage and lifeboats. 320 were able to be rescued, with another 751 lost with the ship including Captain Segura and Rear Admiral Hashimoto. The sinking of Haguro in the Malacca Strait was the last gun battle between major surface warships of the Second World War, and it underlined the degree to which the Allied powers had taken total control of the sea. It was a control they used to squeeze Japan into eventual submission three months later. <laughs>